ओके सो अमर शुरू कर ची अमंदेर फर्स्ट लेक्चर डेटा स्ट्रक्चर है फर्स्ट ऑफ़ ऑल व्हाट वी लुक एट इस दैट एक्चुअली आई हैव डिस्कस्ड इट विथ यू इस दैट प्रॉब्लम ओके सो सो कंप्यूटर साइंस इस ऑल अबाउट प्रॉब्लम व्हाई डू यू राइट कोड बिकॉज we have some problem we want to solve the problem by writing some code okay so so this is one point my next point is that uh, i'll be discussing about data structure uh, versus another concept which is uh, sometimes called abstract abstract data type or ADT. It's a kind of old term, not that much used uh, today, but uh, in any event, it is very important. Another way, it is also known as API or application, application programming, application programming interface. So whatever might be the name is whether API or ADT, Application Programming Interface or API. Whether you call it uh, ADT or API, uh, basically it is an interface. Basically it is an interface. Okay. So what the interface gives is that basically it it uh, it defines. It defines uh, some some operations. Some operations for what? Some operations to solve a particular problem. Okay. So, what are the operations uh, by which we can solve the problem at hand? So, it is it is defined by the interface. So, oftentimes we we draw it like that. We draw a figure. Let me draw it. Uh, yeah. So, so let me try again as far as I can. Okay. So this is a circle. This is uh, a circle, and I I should draw another circle inside it. And this is this is interface. The outer circle is giving us inter interface okay so it gives us interface and as i have told that interface uh, gives us or defines operation and and behind the interface beneath what is there beneath it is called implementation implementation so here you have interface and inside the interface you have the implementation implementation this implementation is called particular implementation of an interface is called actually data structure okay so this is how so we actually uh, work with the interface interface and the functions or operations defined by the interface and the interface is implemented practically implemented by a particular data structure okay so let us let us uh, describe it uh, more okay so let me discuss about it in a different way let me take a new whiteboard okay so here we have Uh, let me take a different color. Here we have interface, interface or ADT or API. Actually, ADT uh, is uh, it is used by the people in the programming world, and API is used by the people. Uh, sorry, ADT is used by the people uh, who are in in algorithm world, and API is used by the people. Who are actually programmers? Okay, so 
and here we have so interface versus data structure okay so interface is the specification interface gives us specification and it tells us what it it tells us about what factor okay what data uh, can be stored okay and what operations what data and what operations what operations are supported what operations are supported and what they mean and what they mean okay so and a data structure gives us how we want to do so this is data structure is all about how implementation okay so how how we want to do here we can also write what we want to do uh, let me take a little bit space here okay here we are interested about what 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 we want and in <clears throat> data structure we define how we want to do and here we are interested about specification here we are interested about representation actual representation of things inside the memory or the computer okay <clears throat> that is it is actually describing or discussing about uh, practical aspect of the uh, problem practical implementation aspect of the problem and uh, here i have told that uh, it is uh, it is uh, the specific interface discusses about what data can be stored and data structure discusses about how to store data again it is how how to how to store data and when uh, in in one hand interface tells us what operations are supported what operations are supported and what they mean and data structure gives us the algorithm that is just gives us the algorithm to support to support those operations okay what operations the operations defined by the interface the operation define operations defined by the interface uh, data structure gives the support algorithm to support those operations okay so it gives us algorithm to support those operations so what you can say is that interface is the problem statement and data structure is the algorithm algorithm uh, that gives that gives solution solution to the problem solution to the problem that we are concerned about okay so um if things seems like a little bit abstract i know it may seem like a little bit as abstract let us uh, give an example what we'll be discussing in in the in the lecture two actually so say for example an interface can be an example of interface can be interface can be sequence so sequence is an example of interface where the problem is that we have a bunch of num numbers or a group of numbers 
numbers or data okay numbers or or data uh, any kind of data character or integer okay so i am writing group of group of data or to make it more understandable i, I can say group of numbers okay so to make it easy to understand okay so group of numbers so our problem is that we want to store we want to store those data in a uh, in a sequential manner say for example i have a group of uh, even numbers from uh, from 1 to 1 to 10 including 10 okay so um, i can write 2 4 6 8 um, 10 so this is a group this is this can be called as a sequence so our problem is that we can to we want to store that sequence and we want to perform some sort of operation upon that sequence say for example we want to find say i i, I we'll be defining the sequence uh, interface later in the lecture too but uh, just to give you some examples say for example we want to know uh, uh, we want we we might want to have an operation uh, to find the maximum maximum from the sequence so this is this might be a function so you can call that function the maximum function that might give the maximum number from the sequence this is an operation that can be defined by the interface sequence interface the name of the interface is sequence interface and the name of the operation is that name of the operation is example of the sequence interface a, uh, a group of even numbers from one to ten so this is the example of a, a, a sequence and the operation that we may want to define is maximum it might be a function basically all the operations are implemented as a function that we'll be, we'll be looking in the lecture too okay so maximum so this is the operation and this is the uh, sequence interface now the question is how can we solve this problem so this is our problem our problem is that we have a group of numbers we want to store those numbers in a sequential manner and we want to perform some sort of operation we, we might want to perform some other operations we might we might want to add or we might want to find some uh, we might want to have an operation might want to define an operation to find a particular number whether the number eight is there or not if the number eight is there then it would be returned the value true might be returned it is not there the value false might be returned so in this way we might define uh, many operations uh, for this sequence interface now the question is how so it is so here the interface is defining what what is the problem and what are the operations that we might be interested to perform upon that interface so here we have everything about what so we are not discussing about how here so how can we store that data we are not discussing here okay so in data structure data structure is the actual implementation of some kind of interface that we define as part of a problem statement okay so here we'd be interested to define how now the question is okay we have a group of numbers, say for example, two, four, six, eight, ten. Now, how can we store that data? So here we can have different solutions, different solutions, right? Different solutions. And we'd look into it in the lecture too. So we can uh, we can use array data structure, and we all know about array, right? So we can use a static array. And we can store those those numbers in the static array two, four, six, eight, ten. We can store those number uh, in the in the st static array, and we can define a function. We can use uh, a programming language, say for example Python, that we'd be using. So we can define a function called maximum, and by writing some for loop and etc. Et we can we can return the maximum number. And this is how we can solve our problem that we have defined in our interface right so this is one solution another solution can be we'd be uh, we'd be looking at uh, when we discuss in the lecture two we look that array has some sort of problems it has some strength but it has some problems also so we would introduce another interface uh, this is static sequence operation and we'd be uh, 
uh, uh, defining another interface which we'll be calling dynamic sequence okay and dynamic sequence pro problem can be solved by uh, by linked list so same interface is same sequence but the problem can be solved by another data structure which we would call linked list you don't need to understand what a linked list is because we discuss about it in details okay so linked list another data structure we would see dynamic array and good news is that we already know all of you already know what a dynamic uh, array is it is actually uh, implemented in python as a list so if you have used the list in python and if you have used the append function i think all of you have already used it append function in python then already you have used dynamic array so dynamic array can be a solution okay so that means you can solve the sequence problem by means of the list by using the list of python you can solve the uh, solve the uh, sequence problem by using the array actually python doesn't have the array data structure python doesn't have the array array data structure so you can use the uh, array that is there in other languages say for example uh, in c c++ or java all these languages have array static array so you can use a c programming language and use array and solve the sequence problem you can use python language and use uh, the list data structure or dynamic array to solve the same problems all these are telling about how you can solve the problem so data structure is discussing about how to solve the problem and interface is uh, giving the problem statement and defining the uh, the operations and so so that you can you can define some algorithm and data structure to solve the uh, to implement those operations okay so is that understood is there any question okay so it is a good question uh, so one of the students have asked what is what is algorithm and uh, my next topic is that i think you you get to know about it okay so any any other question okay so let's discuss about what is algorithm okay so algorithm are algorithm um, is a way to solve a problem or it is also called uh, precise clear or sequence of sequence of clear and precise step by step instructions for solving a problem so here um, so what we have studied is that in interface 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 defines what and it also defines operations now so in order to implement those operations we need to know how and algorithm gives us the precise step by step instruction so that we know how to solve uh, a particular problem or how to implement a particular operations and now what is data structure data structure tells how to store data so that we can implement a particular algorithm okay so data structure so how how to solve the problem practical steps and data structure and again uh, it is it, it, it these two concepts are a kind of related data structure and algorithm in order to implement a data structure or in order to build a data structure you sometimes need um algorithm so data structure basically tells how to store data this is also true this is also true in order to implement a particular data structure or in order to build a particular data structure again you need some algorithm okay implement 
implement or build build a data structure you need algorithm so whenever there is a question of how you 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 might want to know the precise clearly defined steps okay so so algorithm is nothing but precise and clearly defined steps to solve a particular problem okay and how you um how can you express uh, a particular algorithm so there are several ways you can you can use plain english plain english so algorithm sometimes uh, it is uh, it is also um compared with a recipe okay recipe particular recipe for cooking in a, in a in a cooking recipe you have the steps what should you do uh, step by step so that you can find it uh, you can you can uh, cook a particular food okay so algorithm has a particular input sometimes mathematically it is also said that algorithms uh, are algorithm maps a particular input to a particular output so you have particular input algorithm maps uh, for a particular input what should be the output so algorithm has uh, some input and the steps of the algorithm turns the input into output okay and so it is something like that uh, in 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 case of cooking we have the uh, raw ingredients and after after following the recipe you you have you, uh, you get a uh, cooked food so that you can eat okay so something like that so algorithm you can express the algorithm in plain english like recipe you you ex you can express the recipe in plain english in the same way you can you can just write the steps by giving numbers step 1 do this and step 2 do this etc okay so you can and another way you can uh, express algorithm is pseudo code pseudo code is something like code but it is not a uh, it is actually not a code uh, of any any language particular language but it is uh, it is related to uh, it is it's a kind of look like a programming language but actually it is not a programming language so that the idea is so that you can implement by looking at a pseudocode you can implement the algorithm by using a particular language be it c or java or python okay say for example you can write find max uh, to to solve the problem find max okay so you can you can write um, uh, for for numbers in array a okay if a i so you can define max is equal to 0 a i is greater than max a i sorry max is equal to a i max is equal to so these three or four lines i have uh, i have expressed the algorithm to find a maximum number but this is you cannot uh, you cannot write this uh, these sentences or the way i have written it in into any uh, editor of any particular program language and you cannot run it because you would get error because uh, it is not a programming language but you can understand what you need to do so you by looking at this pseudo code uh, you can use any language, be it C, Java, or Python, and implement this algorithm. Okay, so this is uh, all about algorithm and pseudo. Okay, so so if you have understood this, uh, let me um, go to the uh, next topic, which is uh, analysis of algorithm. Okay. analysis of algorithm it is known by a bunch of different names analysis of algorithms also uh, the time complexity of algorithm or only complexity of algorithm time complexity of algorithm 
also known as only complexity of algorithm or sometimes asymptotic complexity of algorithm asymptotic complexity or analysis okay so all these are different names uh, to indicate the same uh, concept that we'll be discussing right now okay so before starting our discussion um what we do is that we run a program uh okay so here we can see a small program okay written in python i hope you can see it okay so um, so i have written a function named dominate okay so so it, it's a very very simple function uh, we have a simple for loop and inside the loop there is a uh, variable result and um, in each every iteration the result is uh, incremented by one Okay, so here we have the uh, simple, simple function named uh, dominant. Okay, so here we have a for loop, and in each iteration of this for loop, the variable result is getting incremented by one. That means the value of the result is getting increased by one in each iteration of this loop. Okay, is that understood? Okay, and finally it is returning the result. That means uh, by looking at the variable result, we, we can know uh, how many times the uh, loop has been iterated. Okay, that means loop koi bar ghure chhe, ita ita amra buste parbo, ee result kiya ta, the variable ta output dekhe. Okay, so I have printed the result variable here by calling the function, okay. So, uh, so let me run it. There's nothing fancy in this program. If I run it as uh, as you can see, it is parameterized by 10. And what we can expect is the value 10 to be printed. As you can see, the value 10 has been printed. Why? Because this loop had, has been iterated 10 times. Okay, this line has been iterated 10 times. Okay, so let me introduce another thing. Uh, to this program in Python. Okay, so let me increase the font size of this program also. Okay, so I hope you can see it now. Okay, so yeah. So the same program, only thing is that, okay, sorry about that. I think something went wrong here. Okay, now it is okay. Okay, so the same, same function, only thing is that we have uh, imported a Python module. Okay, and use this uh, time module and call the time function. Time function gives, uh, 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 returns the current time from my system, current time. So before starting, uh, before starting to call the function, that means before, uh, uh, before running this, uh, running this function, I have called the time function and kept it into a variable called start. And after uh, finish running the function, uh, after after the function call, I have again called the same function time dot time and and stored the time at that point of time that after finished running the uh, running the function and stored the time at that point uh, into another variable called end. So what is the idea is that if uh, end end is the end time of the program and start is the starting time of the program. So if we do a simple arithmetic by uh, subtracting 
uh, start from the end, what we can get is that the running time, the running time of this program, pretty simple. So, so that is what we have done here. Why? Because we want to know about the running time because our discuss, discussion is about running time, okay? And we want to know uh, how to ascertain the uh, running time of, an, of a program or specifically algorithm, okay? So uh, in order to uh, have an understanding of this, we need to know from which line or uh, what is the reason for a program to increase its uh, running time? Okay, so I, I am I'm showing it to you practically. Say, for example, I would parameterize it first of all by 1000 and would see how many seconds it is taking to run. Okay, so let me run it. Okay, so I have, I have ran it. The output is 1000, no problem over there. And the second is, uh, as you can see, 0 0.008. 8.008 second okay so let me let me record keep a record right over here in my desktop okay so or, or i can write over here for when n is equal to 1000 what is the time sorry time time is equal to 0 0.008 seconds right so now let us um, let us increase it to 1 million instead of uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 yeah so 1 million let's run it okay run it okay so as you can see when time is 1 million and the when n is n is 1 million so n is is the parameter so i am i am sending 1 million so n is becoming 1 million right so when n is 1 million so the time has increased to what 0 0.1 second right so a, when n is 1 million time is 0 0.1 uh, second okay so is it an increase or decrease? Increase, right. So the time is getting increased, right? Okay, let us let us uh, run it again and increase the value of n even more. I want to work with 1 billion. n is equal to 1 billion and let's run it again. As you can see, now it is taking a lot of time and we need to wait, okay? So it is working, right? Still it is working. Very interesting. When we are increasing the N, the time is also getting increased, right? Still it is working, no output. Still it is working. Okay, so as you can see, as you can see, so in my computer, actually I, uh, in, in my computer, maybe I have many windows open. Uh, I am using uh, AMD Ryzen 7 and Ubuntu, um, Ubuntu 20.01. And in this machine, when N is 1 billion, the time is taking is 36.18 seconds, which is used. As you can see, we needed to wait for, uh, for more than half a second, right? Okay, so what is the reason? Let us, let us analyze. So from where this increase of time uh, are we getting? Okay. Now analyze that. Okay. So if we analyze this program, what we find that there are certain lines that are running only, only once. When I'm running the program, 
after that those lines are running only once so what are those lines let me let me show you so this line do you think how many times so uh, let me let me create a table right over here uh, Try again so that we can have a straight line. Okay. This is the best I can do. Okay. So okay, so number of times, number of times the uh, line is uh, getting executed. So what do you think? So help me. So start time when whenever I'm running the code. So how many times this sta uh, start is equal to time of time? This line is getting executed how many times is there any answer a program to run color for a a line to koto bar executed with you a line to a line to you one million times executed with you can do that now, I'm to have an e I'm to show line to I have differentiated. So, a line to a particular line to cover particle egg bar. Very good, excellent. Okay, so only once. Okay, so what about this line? Only once. Very good, excellent. What about this line? Only once. Very good, excellent. What about this line? Only once. Now come to the point. What about this line? Only once. What about this line? Only once. What about this line? Result is equal to zero. What about this line? Result is equal to zero. How many times? Yeah, one, time. one times. Very good. So what about this line? For i in range n, how many times? Or let me forget about this line. Let us discuss about this line. How many times this line is running? How many times? So I am. So this line, I'm talking about this line. Think about, think about it deeply. So for this program, one billion times. Excellent. Very good. What is your name? Yeah, excellent. So it is running one. One billion times for 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 right now the uh, the way I have written it. Okay, so right now I have uh, parameterized this function with one billion. So this line is running one billion times. Okay, otherwise we wouldn't have got this output, right? In each iteration, we are increasing it the variable by one. So the value by looking at the value of the variable, you can you can have the understanding how many times this. Uh, line has been executed right because in each execution it has got increased itself by one so finally the output is one billion so clearly you can say that it has been executed one billion times otherwise the value would not have been one billion am i right or wrong okay so one billion times right so by looking at the value of the result you can you can uh, you can say how many times the line that particular line that this red I have uh, used the red arrow for this line. So you can say how many times this line has been executed, right? Is it clear or not? Okay. So how many times this line has been executed? Return result? Only once. Yeah. You people are very great. You are 
you have a very good understanding. There is one problem. Uh, if I do not, uh, I don't want to go into that integrasis. This line, this line would uh, execute. This line would be executed. Uh, uh, how many times? This number plus one. Why this number plus one? Because this line gets executed for for another time uh, when the the value of n uh, gets out of bound of the one billion. Okay, so this is the rule. Say for example, say for example, if I write a, a C type uh, for loop, okay, it would be easier for you to understand. Say for example, if I write for i is equal to zero, if I write for i is equal to zero, i is less than less than ten i plus plus. Then if I write print f suppose i is an integer int i print f percentage d uh, i. So how many times this line would be executed? Can you tell me? From zero to nine. So from zero to nine means this line would be executed ten times. Am I right or wrong? But what about this line? How many times this line would be? Executed? No, 11. 11 times, exactly. Because for, for, for 10 time, it would, it would check, this, um, check this condition and it would find the condition to be true. That's why the, this line would be executed. When the condition is true, the program would go inside the, inside the for loop and execute this line that is there inside the, inside the for loop. But at the end, when the value of i is 10, that means the this condition i is less than 10 is not true. So without checking that, the program won't be able to know that, that this condition is false. So for true condition, uh, for when the condition are true, 10 times the condition, this condition will be true. So it would, it would be executed 10 times and for another times it would get executed when the condition is false. So in any case, in, in case of for loop, uh, uh, the line that is that is the uh, that is in which the condition for the for loop has been expressed, it would it would be executed one times greater than the lines that are inside the for. Loop. Is it clear? Okay. So we can say this is one one billion one billion plus one okay so uh we can ignore this plus one so we can you can for uh, simplicity's sake we can say that this line has been executed one billion times it doesn't matter one doesn't matter okay so anyway so what do you think can you tell me this is a i think this would be a very easy question uh for you so can you tell me is this increase in so as you can see the increase in the execution time of this program. Does it have anything to do with this N or this, uh, this line? This line? Uh, let me ask it again here. EJ in a man with the shate shate je time to be the patchy. When N was 1000, time was 0 0.008 second. When N was uh, 1 million, time was 0 0.10 second. When N was 1 billion, the time was 36 seconds. Is there any correlation between these two? Can you find any correlation? What? Why? Why it is correlated with N? Is it uh, something to do with N or it, it is something to do with some, uh, some line? Yeah this line it is coming from this line because this is the line which is which is uh, giving which is dominating the running time which is actually giving the running time otherwise the running time would, would not have been increased if this line would have executed only once if i would have written the program in such a manner so that this line would be executed only once the time would not have increased is, is that understood? Time to batona. Eli no jodi. Shop line, as you can see, almost every line is getting executed only once. 
we can assume that each and every line to execute each and every line if if we follow the follow a model computation model uh, which is followed by uh, clrs corman lasers on river stain uh, which is also known as uh, bible for uh, data structure and algorithm okay so they followed a computation model which is called ward ram ward ram ram means random here ram means random access machine So you don't need to understand it, but uh, let me just tell you, if we follow the ram random access machine model, what we can say is that each and every line takes a constant time to, to be executed. Protector line is at a constant time line executed. But pura tar to protector to time to je ash, uh, je ta ashche, je 36 second or 0 0.0, protector line thing it ashche. We can, we can consider it constant time. And we can uh, say that for say, for example, this is line number one, this is line number two, this is line number three. So in order to execute line, and this constant time would be a little bit different from another, another line. So we can say that this, uh, in order to in, uh, execute this line, we need time C1. So we can say that each in order to execute each line, we need CI time. CI is a constant, some nanoseconds. Okay. Some nanoseconds. Okay, so we can say in order to uh, execute this line, we need C1 time. In order to execute this line, it is C2. In order to execute this line, it is C3. In order to execute this line, it is C4. It is C5. It is C6. It is C7. It is C8. It is C9. It is C2. Is it clear? Crystal clear? Just under Dhore Nila, my kitchen, I can put no difficulties there. Just even Shoti to lag it. Kinto actually, we don't know how much time uh, each and every line is taking. That's why we have uh, assumed that, assumed it to be a certain constant. It is actually equivalent to certain nanosecond. Okay, certain nanosecond. Okay. So now, uh, in order to find run time, so what, what would be the total run time mathematically? If we multiply this constant time with with the with this number, how many times this line is running? So if you multi multiply these two things and finally add up these two things, wouldn't be equal to this time? Shouldn't be equal to this time? Simple mathematics. Protect a line here, line execute korte, simple mathematics. Protect a line execute korte, at a certain time like this. Line ta koi bar run korte. Idu ta jodi gun kori. Sheshar jodi shob line here gun falta jok kori. Taile final je Time to shit a shuman horkatana. Final the time to shit a shuman horkatana. Simple method is in the polo jotil kitchen. Tomar act a cat's corte at a certain shuman. We cast it with dosh bar kursuman. Even to be dosta cascosu. Put the kaje, shat the tomar. We cast a corte kotor shumala given cast a koi bar kursu. Ergum bishas. Tell e duta gun korepore shop, jodi gun falt a joke kor. Tell it total e casguli corte. A dosta cascote. Tomar kotokon shuman. She did a bit of it. Simple patigonit kinder. Polo jotil kitchen. Okay, so we are doing that simple arithmetic. Say, for example, if we multiply this, it is coming C1 because C1 into 1 is C1, right? Uh, let me take this. Yes, okay. C1 into 1 is C1. Is it clear? C2 into 1 is C2. C3 in, into 1 is C3, right? And C4 into 1 billion is. C4 into 1 billion, we can write plus 1 also in order to be more precise, okay? C5 into also 1 billion, right? C5 into 1. Now it is C6, it is C7, very easy, right? C7 because all of 
them are running only once, right? It is C8, it is C9, it is C10. Now what we need to do is the, we, we need to add, add up all these things, right? All these things, okay? So um, what you can do is that we can write here like that, that running time, we, we write the function for running time, which is parameters by N, Tn, T for time, and it is parameters by N. Why? Because the value of N is getting changed. And when the value of any N is getting changed, the time is also getting changed. That's why it is a function of N. Very easy. Okay, so Tn uh, is equal to C1 plus, we can write C2 plus C3 plus C4 into 1 billion. Am I right? Yeah, 1 billion plus 1 plus C5 into one billion plus C6 uh, plus C7 plus C8 plus C9 plus C10. I think I can erase it because all of the numbers are uh, here. Okay. Let me erase it. Okay. Let me take my pen. Okay, so this is the equation, right? And it should be equal to this, this number, right? It should be equal to this number, 36 seconds, right? Whenever we are using 1 billion, right? But instead of using 1 billion, if you want to write a general equation, what you can do? Instead of using 1 billion, we can write n. Why? Because we are changing this value each and every time. So if we write 1 billion here, it is become becoming a constant, it is not becoming generalized, right? Here, so we, instead of uh, 1 billion here, actually this is the value for N, right? This is the value for N. And we are, uh, oftentimes we are changing this value, right? That's why we can write uh, this variable name. Instead of 1 billion, we can write N, right? Is there any problem if we do that? C4, instead of 1 billion, we are writing N plus one, right? Clear? C5 instead of 1 billion, we are writing N because this is the value for N for this particular instance. Okay. C6 plus C7 plus C8 plus C9 plus C10. Okay. So what we can do is that we can use simple arithmetic. Okay. So we can just uh, break this up and we can write C4 N plus C4, right? It can be written. Okay, simple algebra. Okay, now what we can do is that we can just take in uh, outside and write in this way C4 plus C5 into N. Just we have taken N uh, common C from C4 N plus C5 N. What we have did done is that just we have taken N from here, right? Is it clear? Just we are doing some algebra, right? And what we are doing that's arranging all these constants. These are constant together here. Okay. So what are the constants? C1, then we need to take C2, then C3, then C4, because we have taken this term here only, right? So we need to take C4 from here then this uh, we don't need to take this because it has uh, we have taken it here so c6 c7 c8 c9 c10 so we can put a bracket because all these are constants okay so the this c these two c4 plus c5 this is also a constant and this is also a constant okay so what we can do is that in algebra it is legitimate to uh, assume something is equal to something we can let always let let x is equal to blah 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 so we can do it so we can consider c4 plus c5 is equal to a and all these constant is equal to b and we can simplify this equation in this way a n plus b right so tn is equal to 
n plus b and remember what is n in in this case our n is 1 billion and from where from where we are getting this increase of running time from this n so what we can say is that if i tell that in this uh, in this equation tn is equal to an plus b in this equation n is the dominant term if i say this would you agree with me yes. it is very easy to understand because we have al already proved all these things right so this n is the dominant term okay so in asymptotic analysis or in analysis of algorithm or in finding time com complexity of algorithm what we are interested in is about what is the dominant term for what term we are uh, when we increase n uh, to a very very large number which term would be dominant and for which term we get the increase in running time so we are interested about that term so what we do is that we have a mathematical tool we in order to express that that this term is dominant in order to express this piece of information we have a mathematical tool which is a kind of complex but you don't need to understand uh, uh, all the intricate details about it but just you need to know that there is a mathematical tool called asymptotic analysis or asymptotic notation asymptotic notation in order to uh, in order to express this tiny piece of information that this guy or this term is the dominant term we use asymptotic notation and say that tn the running time of tn is the order of n so this is called big o this is called what this is called big o big o big o stands for order of so this algorithm or this program runs in order of n what does it mean it means what we know already that this term is dominant when we increase n to a large number, the running time would be dependent on this term, not on this term, not on A, not on B, because these are insignificant when we increase n to say 1 billion or 1 trillion or even more. So do you think that these terms has any effect? C1, C2, C3, because all these lines are running once and it is giving some nanoseconds. So when it comes to the question of having 30 second running time, do we, does it, do you think that some nanosecond is very significant? No. And when you would, you would increase it to 1 billion, you would get certain minutes, as you can already understand. In my machine, you would get certain minutes. And in that case, also, it would become even more ins in, insignificant, these terms. So what is, the idea is that in a uh, word RAM model, random access machine model, idea is that if you have a running time function, Say, for example, let me uh, take my uh, whiteboard. Let me take my whiteboard. Okay. So, if you have a running time function, Tn is equal to, say, for example, in our case, An by B, what you need to do is that you ignore all of the constants and all of the uh, coefficient of the uh, highest term. Highest term is n here. So, you should ignore this and you should write Tn is equal to big O of n. Again, let me show you. T, if Tn is equal to A n square plus B n plus C, you should disregard this constant. You should uh, let me take a different color. Yeah, you should disregard this constant. This is a, which one is higher order, n or n squared? Which one is higher order? Term? N squared is higher order term. So you should ignore all lower order terms and their coefficients. So this is the lower order, n is the lower order term. And this is the coefficient of n. You should also disregard this. You should also disregard the coefficient of the highest order term. And you should just keep the highest order term alive. And you should write Tn is equal to big O of n squared. This is called asymptotic analysis or asymptotic complexity of the algorithm. This is how you can solve it. So there are other, other asymptotic notations this is big O. I think you have already understood. And why we are disregarding these terms, I think it is very much clear to you. Because when you increase n to a very large number, this term would get insignificant, very, very insignificant. So you don't need to consider it. So you don't need, you need to just consider the dominant term. Okay. So this is called big O notation, big O. We write it as a big O actually. And uh, this, this, gives us, uh, this gives us the upper bound. This is called asymptotic upper bound. 
it is called asym asymptotic uh, sorry asymptotic upper bound and there are other two asymptotic notations in in case in, in fact uh, some other asymptotic notations also but i uh, show you uh, uh, about two other it is called big big theta big theta which is written in this way theta okay big theta it gives us asymptotic tight bound asymptotic tight bound and another one is big omega omega it is something like that it gives us asymptotic <coughs> asymptotic lower bound Sir. one minute so there is the uh, there are a hell lot of mathematics uh, uh, behind these notations but you don't need to know about all of this just you need to know that when we are using big o we are saying that the running time of algorithm in force case cannot go beyond that so this is giving us a guarantee that running time cannot go beyond this order that means when n is equal to in case of uh, uh, n squared running time an algorithm whose running time is n squared we can say that when n is equal to 1000 for this algorithm uh, the running time cannot go beyond n squared that means 1000 squared so this is giving us uh, as the guarantee that this is the worst case running time uh, and this is the upper bound and tight bound is something which is which gives us a close estimation of the actual running time and asymptotic lower bound gives us uh, tells us that the running time is at least this it cannot go below that so it it doesn't give us any guarantee that it cannot in worst case it cannot go beyond that so whenever we say that running time is big omega blah 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 something uh, 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 big omega n squared it, it doesn't give us guarantee that running time won't go in case of the this uh, running time won't go say for example if n is 1000 running time won't go beyond 1000 square we, we don't get this guarantee but we we can understand that running time is at least 1000 square minimum running time it gives us so to put it simply, it gives us meaning, minimum running time, it gives us maximum running time in worst case, and it gives us a close approximation of the actual running time. Because you need to understand that these notations are not giving us the actual running time.
sorry, I have muted. Good day. That's a bit anyway. कौन थे कि म्यूट हो लगा मैं तो अच्छा ये नहीं बात शुरू करें एनीवे ओके सो ओके सो लेट मी लेट मी सो we are interested what i have just told that we are interested about order of growth of learning time not actual learning time so whenever <laughs> we have a, an algorithm a whose asymptotic running time is big o n and whenever we have another algorithm whose asymptotic running time is big o n squared if this is algorithm b to solve the same problem we can say that uh, the growth of running time is faster for this why because if we plot n versus n squared we would get a quadratic curve that means it it grows faster and if we have if we plot this n versus n we would have a linear curve so running time would grow uh, less faster for this this case so this is better we can say this algorithm is better than this algorithm so in our case this comparison is enough for us to uh, complete our discussion in algorithm okay so uh, what i want to show you is that so there are different types of running time one is what we have seen linear time okay big o n so it is called linear linear time algorithm another one is constant time big o 1 it is written as big o 1 when we would have constant time algorithm can you tell me in our program in our case if we could have somehow remove this line result is equal to result plus is equal to 1 Okay, if you could have removed removed this that line, our algorithm would have been big O one. Why? Because all other lines are running once. So constant running time means that it is not dependent upon n, and all lines are running only once in the algorithm. That means there is no loop. Okay, I I will discuss about it. So this is logarithmic running time. This is log linear. This is quadratic. Okay, this is quadratic running time. This is cubic. okay and this is exponential and this is very very bad anything beyond quadratic running time is very bad and we have other running time it is called factorial running time big o factorial n this is uh, this is also very bad okay so if we draw the uh, curve for all of the running time all of the standard running time so it looks something like that why logarithmic running time is better than linear running time because log function grows less uh, Uh, less faster what should i say that uh, linear running time grows faster than logarithmic running time okay so from the curve as you, you can see that okay so and log linear is uh, uh, is uh, not better than linear and progressively all these are uh, these are progressively uh, faster running time algorithm than the previous one okay so quadratic is uh, faster uh, the quadratic time grows faster than log linear time and cubic time grows faster as you can see from the curve it is growing faster than quadratic time and exponential it is worse the curve is almost 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 uh, vertical okay so we don't want exponential algorithm actually okay so now finally i want to finish this discussion by giving you a practical tool how can you understand the running time by looking at the algorithm or code okay so here you have some uh, some guidelines so this is say for example if you when you have a linear running time uh, when you have a constant running time all of the lines are running only once as you can see all of the lines are all of the lines are running once so that's why it is big o 1 and when you have when you have linear running time when you have linear running time you have a loop you have a for loop which is running uh, sorry when you have uh, linear running time let me show you
when you have linear running time you should have a for loop which is actually running n times so this is the idea and when you have logarithmic running time you should know that n is always getting a decrease by half each and every iteration of the loop n should decrease by half as is the case for this program when n is decreased by half you can say that this algorithm is going to have a uh, logarithmic time complexity okay so you should if you notice the loop whether there is any loop if the loop is running only n times it should be big o n if the in each iteration of the uh, loop if the if n is getting uh, decreased by half it is it is big o log n okay and if you have if you have a multiple for loop in which case one for loop is under another for loop when one for loop this for loop is under this for loop from the indentation you can see it. okay so in c we can write it for i is equal to 0 i is uh, i so yeah let me let me write it differently for i is equal to i is equal to 1 i is less than or is equal to 10 i plus plus and inside that if i write for j is equal to 1 j is less than or is equal to 10 j plus plus okay so if i if i just uh, write say for example uh, let's take n is equal to 0 and if i write n is equal to n plus 1 so after executing this uh, for loop, what would be the value of n? Can you tell me? That means how many times this line would be executed? Can you tell me? For, sorry? No. This for loop is under this for loop. For each value of i, this, this for loop would run 10 times. So what would, what would be the final answer? For each value of i, this this line would be executed 10, 10 times and how many times this uh, this i is going from 1 to 10 so what is the final value nine. so let me uh, a for loop protect bar protect bar you know a for loop to dosh bar run for j one thick J10 percent to that. So, the if I value jokon one, I value jokon one, the phone a line to dosh bar run copy, I value jokon two, the phone a line to dosh bar run copy, I value jokon three, a line to dosh bar run copy, I value jokon four, a line to dosh bar run copy, I value jokon five, the hundred bar, I value six, the hundred bar, I value jokon seven, the hundred bar, I value jokon eight, the hundred bar, I value nine, the hundred bar, I value jokon ten, the hundred bar, the labor job call, got it. Hundred. Hundred times. Sorry, we can find 100. Okay, so how we uh, how we could have got it 10 into 10. Karon Gunta Jok Nagaro, I'm a Gun Kotapatam, Rabotapatam, the eta dosh barred jono, eta dosh bar for a caster dosh barred for the barjon, a caster dosh barred for the little guna. The dosh gun dosh dosh gun dosh is equal to 100. If I put n right over here, if I just put n, n squared, very good. If you see a double for loop, that means one for loop is under another for loop, you would get to know that the running time for this algorithm or for this code would be quadratic, big O n squared. Is it clear? And in the similar way, cubic triple for loop. So if another for loop is under this for loop, this is, it, 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 is going, it is going to be cubic, big O and cube. Is it clear? Okay. So finally, let me just show you. Okay, so if sometimes we can use we can use double constant. Okay, so let me show you. So for this case, this this loop is running n times. And that loop is running m times. So, what would be the final running time? Big O n plus n. Why? Because this loop is running n times. Uh, uh, these two are independent, not under each other. Be, had it been this loop uh, been under this loop, it would have been big O n into m. 
right a loop ta jodi a loop ta under e hoto tai na for for i in range range n abar etar under e for j in range m ekhane ekta ache tahole ki hoto tahole eta to big o n into m tai na কারণ এই দুইটা একটু গুণ হয় একটা আন্ডারে একটা থাকলে তখন তো এটা যতবার রান করছে এটা যতবার রান করছে দুইটা গুণ করলে পায় না একটু আমরা দশ গুণ দশ করলাম না তো যদি একটা দশ হতো একটা এগারো হতো কি করতো দশ গুণ এগারো তাই না ঠিক সেরকম তাহলে এন ইন্টু এম কিন্তু যেহেতু এটা এই দুইটা ফলক ইন্ডিপেন্ডেন্ট তাহলে আমরা কি করবো যোগ করবো ইন্টু হবে না তাহলে বিগো এন প্লাস এম কারণ এটা এন বার রান ইটারেট করছে এটা এম বার ইটারেট তাহলে আমরা বলবো বিগো এন প্লাস এম टेबिल this would just give you the tool to practically solve your problem okay say for example whenever uh, run, when running time is constant big o1 you will have just simple lines no loop example example add two numbers so if you want to add two numbers you don't need any loop that's why you would get constant running time logarithmic running running time so binary search we study in binary search in each and every iteration we uh, we all only consider half of the array okay so that's why the array already gets halved by each iteration that's why that uh, the running time is logarithmic and linear already you have seen uh, an example of linear running time big o n and some running time is log linear that means n log n is called log log linear or linearithmic lin linearithmic okay and we would see uh, in this semester or in the next semester about uh, one of these examples is march sort and you have quadratic running time this is very important you should look at the loops number of loops if one loop is under another loop then you would understand that uh, you you are you are going to have a quadratic running time because this loop is running n times and this loop is under this loop and this loop is running n times so you'd have a quadratic running time that means we go n squared and if you have a triple for loop triple for loop in which case in which case each of the for loop is under another each of the for loop is under another for loop so this this is under this one and this is under this one so you have triple for loop in this case all of this would get multiplied n into n into n okay if you have m here just multiply m instead of n right n into m into n but if all of these are n then it is n into n into n that means n cubed right okay so you'd have cubic running time okay i think uh, knowing this much is enough you have exponential running time uh, which is very bad algorithm and this is the end of our discussion I, if you have any question you can ask me from here break to class er riye na jodi if this class you can ask me sir data sir so if we have just working knowledge sorry i have working knowledge ta ki amake abar summary kori ami working knowledge ta hocche tumi dekhba je ekhane kono loop ache jodi kono loop na thake just constant thake big o1 jodi ekta single loop thake which is running n times this is big o n okay 
So if there, there is uh, there are there are two loops and one loop is under another loop, it is going to be uh, something like quadratic running time. We go n squared. Okay, and other case is that if you find that the problem size is always getting halved. Okay, that means pro uh, problem size is getting decreased by 50%. N is getting de decreased by 50%. Mane N jeta niya chur, so ta puttek bar odd dekho ya chur. Puttek loop ya, puttek iteration odd dekho ya chur. Ilkum situation dekhle, buz ba jeta log rezi. P go log in. Okay, so linear ho be, jodhi yate ek bar for loop ta run kut ho. Say for example, array niya kats kut chama. Tali dek ba jay array te, ee kasta kut te, aamar ki ekta loop lag be, ekta loop jodhi lag e, tali ee loop ta jodhi n bar run kut, tali b go n. थैंक यू वेरी मच